Yes, we're here at the Sodelpa headquarters and uh, speaking to the General Secretary of the party, Vilia Mitakehawa. Vili, uh, one of your former party leaders and also uh, a minister in the SDL government, uh, who also went on to become the opposition leader, uh, has resigned from Temu Mukepa. Can you confirm uh, the resignation and the reasons for it, please? Yes, we've received uh, the Marama's uh, resignation uh, straight after our management board meeting. And um, we, I have received it and acknowledged uh, by email to, to her. And the reasoning for her resignation is that she's uh, uh, going to be to facilitate her membership to the Great Council of Chiefs. Now there's some questions uh, being raised. Also, uh, yesterday afternoon, a statement was released by Rote Mumu Kepa, where she's also making clear that she's not a contender for presidency uh, in terms of uh, the nation's presidency, and uh, that uh, she uh, has full support for Ratu William Katuni Vere. Uh, in that statement also, she said she's disappointed uh, that you had started bringing up the issue uh, without talking to her. Can you please clarify? Yeah. <coughs> yeah um, first of all, uh, as uh, General Secretary of the Sotelpa Party, and uh, as you all know, there's a coalition agreement. And uh, although the presidency is not part of the coalition agreement, uh, but by virtue of just been uh, uh, discussed and it was proposed from the People's Alliance uh, Party and, uh, and the National Federation Party. It was my duty to keep on um, bringing it up the issue as it is very specific. Uh, from day one, they have mentioned in their proposal was that uh, for Sodelpa to nominate uh, for president was uh, Rote Mumu Kepa. And uh, to further that, uh, uh, when I was appointed as general secretary, she was also uh, appointed to be my mentor, uh, to sort of uh, guide us or guide me. <coughs> so I always mentioned to her uh, this issue about the presidents. Uh, never she said uh, not to say, not to use her name. Never she said that, uh, you know, that what, what she's saying now. Eh? But I always be upfront and everybody knows me. I'm not somebody who, who will, you know, things that I discuss, I put it on the table. And this is one of them that uh, uh, it was proposed by Honorable Kam Kamida. And uh, management board has given the secretary to make sure that the compliance of all the proposals that was given to the party from the day uh, we signed the, the agreement and agreed to that agreement. So it's, it's not <coughs> in the agreement that was signed, but it's in the minutes of uh, your discussion? Correct. It is in our minutes. Uh, the proposed are in our minutes. Um, in fact, it was uh, in our minutes we have uh, been uh, requested not to put in the minutes, uh, not to put into the coalition agreement. What was the reason for that? Uh, no, it was a request from uh, Mr. Honorable Kamkamida not to put it in the agreement, and it was just a mutual understanding between the between the management board and People's Alliance and NFP. So Rote Mumu saying you did not have any discussions with her prior to you discussing it publicly. Uh, you would say you've had discussions with her? Uh, yes, I have, have had discussions with her. And just by virtual and by convention of it's been mentioned in the first meeting of the management board when we were negotiating uh, whether to join the coalition. Yeah, her name and everything was very specific to just her. There was no other name or, or anything like that. It is just the Marama Rote Ducati, Rote Mumu Kepa. Now, the other issue that uh, you have uh, with uh, Sadelpa is you had uh, to go to the police station, <laughs> what we've heard uh, on Thursday, late Thursday. Uh, what transpired at the headquarters here? Yeah, we had uh, a member who is not a financial member and one of our staff 
they actually came trying to push an agenda to uh, you know into the staff without the office knowing uh, the actual meeting or the super constituency in general uh, to be participate in that so i did not uh, i did not allow it or to receive the documentation because there are some compliance issue but was the sorry just to, for people's understanding yeah so, so there was a super constituency meeting for sudapa so you know this is the thing uh, <coughs> in a constituency there's a branches and when you want to do something for the constituency, you need to inform all the branches. Under the constitution, there's some uh, minimum requirements. And on the minimum requirements, doesn't mean that you forego uh, what is already there, you know, in, in terms of branches, the number of branches, the people who are already participating and who are already financial members of the, the party as super constituency. In this case here, they were coming to pay for their, um, their membership on, on Thursday and on that paper they had an agenda or meeting minutes that they wanted to put in without other members. So I'm, I, what I'm trying to do is to remove this uh, so-called attack that we are a Leomuri party. I want everyone to have a fair go and everybody to be informed everybody to have their democratic rights respected in terms of this kind of uh, meetings. Eh? So that's... that's, uh, you're, that's saying they did not, you're saying that they, they did not follow the proper process? Correct. And based on that, if uh, you had accepted that, you would have had a change in uh, who would be representing the management board? Yeah, if we had done that, then uh, we would have split the, the super constituency into two. Uh, we would have had a, a group that was, uh, you know, a bona fide group that were financial members prior to these guys coming to do this, and then this group here. And, uh, and uh, my aim is to try and stop this division. We need to bring everybody together, and uh, that's the reason. Once I did not take the documentation, uh, the guy started to be abusive, so I chased him out. And uh, so. There's uh, other people who are involved, who are with our office, so we are dealing with that uh, internally. So you're saying there's a group that turned up trying to assault you? Uh, there's just uh, the two boys, eh? Yep. Yeah. So I didn't want to retaliate or anything, I just told them to go out. You threatened? Yeah, they, they, were, they were threatening. Mm. They were trying to ask me to come outside to be punched up. Um, you know, and, and all other swears and I mean my wife was sitting there and my son uh, we have uh, other people from the vicinity here who were all watching looking at the commotion of how they were verbally assaulting me and uh, for me it was an uh, intent to cause bodily harm and uh, intent to cause uh, property, property damage. Eh? So it was purely because of you did not accept the yes. documents that they were giving? Correct, that was purely because of that. And I was thinking, why was it so aggravated? Eh? How Are you concerned it has reached this level? Yes, I'm, uh, like I said, they've been doing this, I think they've been doing it with past uh, general secretaries or things like that, but we need to stop. We need to stop the coup culture. We need to stop the bullying. We need to stop how people do things, the, you know, with respecting the majority. We need to just shift the, the paradigm and, and shift to more, um, more democratic with every, looking after everyone and stop being elitist. So you've taken it to the police? And I've reported it to the police and um, yeah, I've reported it to the police and my statements have been taken. The other issue that we're hearing is that a few uh, of your Sodelpa members uh, deciding that uh, they should be defecting from your party and joining the People's Alliance and uh, hoping that uh, eventually Sadelpa gets dissolved. Can you confirm that there's moves afoot in relation to that? Yes, there's a lot of uh, discussion happening uh, in the background. Uh, we are here for the party as it's the only political party, institutionalized political party. 
there has been talk from the beginning, from last year, to fade out the party. Uh, who, the people who are here right now are the ones that are making sure that these parties will not be faded out or be removed uh, from, the, from the political arena. And we are here to stay. And uh, I mean, they've already, most of them have already resigned. And uh, that's where we're going. Your management board meeting on Friday, uh, you had this issue with the Suva constituency. And then there's word that there were calls being made by very senior people within your party for you not to reach a quorum for your Friday meeting. How did Friday transpire for you? Uh, that's uh, very true. We, while we were sitting in the meeting, we, some of our members were receiving uh, calls not to attend the meeting, uh, which was uh, funny. I mean, we found it uh, a little bit awkward because these are the very people who are supposed to be supporting the party in moving the party forward because there was some uh, very uh, permanent uh, I mean, stuff that we needed to discuss which was the party leaders uh, appointments and criteria. So people were being called not to attend the meeting. So in that regards I actually put it in the meeting that there's uh, members and non-members who are trying to sabotage our meeting and the president to take, uh, the, uh, there was a motion from the board for the president to, to uh, you know, to move the quorum section aside. Although we had 21 members and three uh, apologies, um, but it's just that, you know, we didn't know what was the reasoning for this um, sabotage. You don't know what's the reason for the sabotage? Yeah, we are writing uh, letters uh, this afternoon, uh, I mean tomorrow afternoon, uh, to ask the constituencies uh, the reasoning of why they didn't send any apologies. And uh, because we have sent these documents out to the constituencies uh, some 20 days ago, 21 days, for them to talk to their constituencies because the, the discussion in the management board has to be from the constituencies, what they discuss from their members. And from their members, they bring it up to the management board. So it comes down to what was the agenda for the management board meeting? Yeah, the, so one of the issue was, um, you know, minutes arising from the last minutes, uh, meetings, and uh, the, you know, just talking about where to go from now in terms of ASEVI, uh, the party leader, uh, the constitution review was supposed to be in, re in writing, so most of that was submitted. And just our other committee filling up vacancies in our committees, which was uh, HR, Finance and Working Committee. And it was really important to do this meeting to appoint these people so that we can move. The party still operates uh, normally. There's a suggestion that there's also a push for Asiri Randrondro, your Sudelpa MP now, uh, for him to be removed from parliament or removed from the position that he holds based on the allegations uh, uh, regarding uh, re a relationship, an alleged relationship with Linda Tambuya. Of course, Linda Tambuya is uh, currently facing the Disciplinary Committee of uh, People's Alliance as we speak. Uh, wh what is Sodelpa's decision based on some of the people within the party pushing for Randrondo to be investigated or removed? Well, uh, as far as uh, we understand, it was, uh, it was to find out uh, the reasoning of his dismissal. And um, the Prime Minister has already given us the reasoning of his dismissal, and that was to do with the FNU. Uh, in terms of uh, issues in regards to Linda, uh, we really don't know, you know, because most of it seems to be fake and uh, we have no idea uh, the truth in that matter. It's, it's really between Aseri and Nindo or whoever is may trying to shift this, uh, uh, this uh, story, you know, because for us our issue was the dismissal. What was the reasoning of his dismissal? And uh, the dismissal was based on FNU appointments and the management board had set and um, viewed documentations 
And last week they've agreed that there is nothing wrong uh, in terms of following the directive of the Prime Minister. He followed the directive and um, brought those five uh, individuals to the board, to the FNU board. And that's what he has done. I cannot talk on that uh, issue about uh, Linda because there's a lot of uh, fake information there flying around. No, there will be no investigation or no removal of mm. Asiri and Rondo based on those allegations? Uh, no, we, uh, it's all, to us, it's all fake. We will not, uh, there's no, we have not received any letters, not received any documentation or evidence. So do you believe those with some within the party are are working against the decisions being made? Well, uh, <coughs> if uh, our management board meeting on Friday is something to go about, then that question that you are saying is, is very true because we want to stop these uh, people who are not uh, bringing up the issues of their constituencies, the issues of their day-to-day -day living, the issues of what problems they are having from their constituencies. These individuals who are doing this must be doing it for their own interest. And they are not coming to the meeting with a collective uh, thinking of their uh, constituencies. I'm going to ask you another question. There's more information coming through after the 2022 elections when the first meeting took place, you had a, a senior uh, managers meeting or senior executives meeting of Sodelpa at Butt Street and a, and a message given at the time even before negotiations started it's been said now Fiji is a small place that the message was Sodelpa has to join Fiji first is that correct? Uh, like I said you know that's uh, privy to the discussion of that uh, of that time um, you know, I am not authorized to divulge uh, minute uh, or the discussing the discussions within the, the management board discussions, eh? in the minutes. But uh, I can tell you it's, it was something like that. So that was before any negotiation started? Uh, it was something like that. So that was the reason why um, the wisdom of the executives to approach uh, the PAP to also provide their, their, um, their proposal. Was there a particular person who asked for you to go towards Fiji first rather than People's Alliance and NFP? I, I think we should not uh, go back to the past. It's the past is the past. We can only learn from it and uh, move forward. And uh, I think uh, bringing those issues, uh, we, we, like I said, you know, we are trying... I have a reason why I'm asking. <laughs> My reason is that this issue continues to linger on. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, right up to just a few weeks ago, and that creates, you would admit, it creates a lot of uncertainty, and uh, it, the eyes are off the real issues that matter in the country. Right. So uh, do, are those figures still present and pushing that agenda or do you believe you've managed to stay clear of that? Uh, we've uh, managed to stay clear from that. Uh, the management board has met and we are 110% with the coalition government. We're not going to sway away from the agreement. Um, in the last meeting, uh, Ms. Honorable Aseridan Rondo has stated that he has he has been out of cabinet for one month and uh, he can continue like that for another six months to one year or two years uh, so those elements that uh, that you are talking about are no longer here so i don't think that it is it is any possibility of doing it we are like i said to the media after the meeting, we are steadfast, we, are, we will honor our words, we are all Christians and we will not uh, deviate from what we have agreed to and what we promise. All we want is uh, respect, 
and the compliance of what everyone had agreed to and uh, that's it even if they don't agree to it only god knows only god knows that what we've agreed to and we are all praying uh, things are coming out slowly and things are moving slowly towards uh, what we've uh, agreed to and uh, and that's it. We are, we are here. The management reiterated again last meeting that we are here to, to make sure that we last the full term of this uh, coalition government. Your party leadership, uh, you have an AGM coming up. You had earlier told me it will be in April uh, in relation to, and uh, you had said that uh, Mr. Avoka may not uh, put his hands up for uh, the party leadership position again, but that's yet to be seen uh, when it opens up. Uh, what's the decision based on uh, your AGM? Uh, again, uh, management board has given the criteria uh, for HR to start uh, the show and to advertise it uh, as soon as possible. The, the, the vacancy is open. Uh, anybody can um, apply for it as long as they comply with the, with the criteria that have been set. Um, as far as uh, our parliamentary leader is concerned, I mean, he can also apply it again. Uh, it's open. Uh, what, is, what is, uh, the criteria? What are some of the key I elements? Uh, in, in, a, in a nutshell, the criteria is basically what we have learned from the past elections and the past parliamentary, uh, the past party leaders, and uh, we've taken the flaws and sort of like put it there so that we don't repeat the same, uh, the same flaws or the same problems um, moving towards. It. So, in a nutshell, it's just basically we're learning from all the mistakes uh, that we have uh, attained in the last uh, four elections. What kind of support or backing does uh, an aspiring party leader for Sodalpa need to have based on the requirements? Well, uh, first of all, you have to be a, a member of a branch and that branch has to be part of a constituency and uh, first of all, uh, support from his constituency, you know, supporting him to be the party leader and uh, this is just in a, in a nutshell you know, and then they have to have, uh, you know, be, be eight, eight years membership of the party, senior. Uh, have to have a qualification. Uh, minimum uh, a bachelor degree in, uh, uh, bachelor degree, but very preferably in uh, political science. And um, has fully understand the party dynamics and uh, how it works in terms of our constitution. Um, and just how generally how things work in Parliament, uh, knowing the standing orders, uh, knowing how we operate, uh, you know, within the, the political sphere. Um, yeah, that's basically just uh, one of those minimum requirements. So when are you expected to have the meeting? We're having, an, um, we're having a HR meeting tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Uh, to work on the resolution of the management board that was done and then we are moving forward with that. Uh. And you have to have this meeting before 30th June? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, like I said in our constitution you have to do a very transparent uh, nationally recognized uh, format and um, we have you know the process of doing all these things uh, this uh, compliance issue is taking takes a little bit of time. So we have uh, actually booked the 20th of April to be the first date possible to have our AGM to endorse the party leader. But because we have this process going, our last date of having the AGM is 30th of June of this year. So we have like about three to four months to, you know, to as a as a buffer, just in case uh, we need to move forward or move backwards the endorsement due to some uh, maybe you know advertising or uh, those kind of things. Yeah, we need 
what, 14 days. So tomorrow we will kind of discuss it with the HR committee. How long is good enough for application uh, and, um, and, 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 and other information, etc. And Guilherme, you, you were saying that uh, you wouldn't want the party to be known like a new Muri party. Yes. Uh, you, you've had some incidents, what you're talking about, uh, you know, after the 2022 elections, right up to last Thursday night, people coming and threatening you. Uh, on Friday, people calling up, trying for you not to get a quorum to have a meeting. How are you dealing with these issues, knowing that it is affecting the party? You know, um, the constituency has uh, the powers to discuss issues. Inter we are the only party that has about 29 constituencies which goes to the people. We are representatives of the people here. We represent the people while we are here. So these members of these constituencies are representative of their people from their constituencies, from the branches they come from. So we are now, for me, I'm trying to instill and make sure that everybody, when they come to their meeting, they have to bring uh, the minutes of their constituencies. The number of people, what, what problems are they facing? What issues are they facing? Whether it's be bus fare, the card, flooding, uh, you know, tells. We are having these issues coming from everywhere. So those things have to be documented from the constituents. It's when, when these constituencies go rogue, where some executives of these constituencies start doing things just for themselves. This is when the limo restarts. And this is the disconnection from the people. And this is something that, you know, from last year I've been trying to revitalize our constituencies. Because the people is the real deal, you know, like in, in terms of why we are here. That's, that's basically how I think is going to take all this Limuri thing, is to remove the selfishness. We need to remove the selfishness. Go back to where uh, this uh, party started. This party started from Naita City. This party started because of the issues of Monasavu, the issues of water, the issue of house, the road, was the people's issues. So we need to go back to that. And that's my job, is to make sure that we shift it back to the concerns of the people. Not a few, the people from the ground. Not a few who are elitists. The people from issues from the, you know, from their daily problems and concerns. Just my follow up, just, you know, some people brand you as a, uh the man in a three-piece suit causing trouble and uh, causing uncertainty and uh, a junior person who will be taught a lesson eventually. What's your comments to those people? I have been in politics for all my life. Uh, if you don't know, everyone has been in politics all their life. You start with your family. When you're small, you have to politicize your table. Who has to eat first? Who has to use the butter first? That is politics. Then you come along and do sports. Politics in sports is quite unique. It is when people come there to put their aspirations, parents' aspirations, to their children. And then you as the coach or the person who's running the sports try and accommodate the parents' aspirations and the child's, you know, uh, dreams. So, you know, that is my background. I've been, uh, I took myself again to school uh, back in 2017 to learn political science. So I, I graduated from the University of Fiji as a postgrad certificate in international relations. I'm a, in a suit in respect for you. I, I'm in a suit in respect of the party office. I'm in the suit in the respect that I represent the people of this party. 
I'm in a suit because I respect this, my, my, what you call my sitting as a general secretary. Everybody knows me when I was growing up. I'm a t-shirt and a three-quarter person. It's almost like when I came to this position, I just turned 50. And I just sort of like uh, became uh, matured when I came to this position. But I have uh, spent a lot of time in the, game, in the world of politics, both from the family perspective, from the sports perspective, from the business and economic perspective, even to the village perspective. So I've now come in this position and I think I'm well um, acquainted to deal with the stress or anything to do with this, uh, you know, the polit political sphere. Thank you very much, Vili, for taking out your Thank time you. to speak to the people of Fiji today. Thank you, Vijay.